Hey, Bryson. Uh, sorry. Oh. sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> we're live now. <laughs> Christina, <laughs> howdy, heard. Welcome to another uh, Unicorn Chef episode, the kind of show where we never know what the hell is going on. It's been that way since we started it. The world has been going crazy. The world keeps fucking going crazy. So you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to keep cooking, bringing new chefs on, sharing, loving, being silly, and donating to good causes, which is a great segue, Christina. What is our good cause for tonight that our folks can donate to and make the world a little bit better? So it's um, the National Brain Tumor Society, braintumor.org. Um, I chose that because that's what my father passed away from four years ago this very day. So I chose that back then, and I decided that after you, after you and I were talking in December, right after Christmas, I decided, he said June 30th, and I'm like, okay, I'll just do it that way. So that's why. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about your father, but I'm glad that we can uh, do something in his memory. And since somebody has already mentioned your awesome hair, it kind of reminds me a little bit of my, my unicorn. So speaking of unicorns, I have a present for you. Hopefully it shows up. I will get it to your desk. It is a rubber ball with a unicorn head. Very cool. Just for you. Pick that up in Maine. Just got back from vacation. So for those of you cooking along tonight, you know the deal. Hashtag Unicorn Chef. We want to see what you make. It's always neat to see how different folks make the same thing, and it comes out a little bit different. And you're just getting all sorts of compliments on here. Your eye makeup, the hair. They're, they're loving it. They're loving it. So okay. first question awesome. that every chef has to get through to get through the gauntlet to get started. What are you drinking? I am drinking uh, Real Sangria. I picked it up today at the store. There's the glass. And there is, whoops, wrong way. There's the bottle. Getting used to the camera. So um, that's my drink. And Bryson, what are you drinking? Let's go. Nothing complicated, out. just a, the, the Guinness that has the nitrogen in it. And I'm out of apple mm -hmm. cider, so I can't make my usual black velvet. So I'm just making do with a straight pint. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. So today I am doing bistec and cebollado, as everyone who's got the recipe. Um, so because of timing, it's actually, I'm going to start with some simple things before I even get to the steak. So let's see. One pot going, and it's going to be black beans. Normally, the way my mom taught me to do this was pressure cooker, do the whole thing the slow way, because of there's no way you can do that in 30 minutes. So I am relying on a can of black beans, but it's what you do to them to make them taste better after the fact. And what I do is I add a bay leaf to the black beans, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit of onion powder. And I'll give that a stir and let that sit on the boat. Sorry, I'm sorry, I gotta jump in real quick. Black beans was not on the recipe. So yep, sorry. That was the <laughs> add on. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, what, I, I totally missed that sec. I don't have black beans lined up. So um, we're gonna do kind of like a black bean separate and then add them into the rice. It'd be started on the side or on top of the rice. Okay, so, so I gotta throw some black beans together real quick. Right. So my apologies. Yes, that wasn't in the recipe. Uh, let's see. Now the next part is the rice because that takes good solid twenty plus minutes to cook. Um. So I've got rice in the pot. I'm gonna put it on high. I'm gonna add some oil, olive oil to it. Back. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to start sauteing that. So let that start doing. It takes a moment or two. Get to the right point. Um, again, with the recipe, the rice is something my mom taught me how to do. Um, that was the way she liked doing it. 
most importantly, it was something she learned back before I was even born. Um, rather than having her just plain boiled white rice or you know, rice out of a box that you can just buy, she taught how to do this. So, letting the stove come up to, up to proper temperature. And so let's see. Getting there, getting there. Uh, so the bistec and cebollada, that was something that my dad loved. Um, my mom actually never made it. Uh, my dad learned to have it from traveling in Latin America and from his career in the army. Um, so we ended up, to, I found out actually later in life that it was one of the things he liked to eat the most. So let's see. Rice is coming in the army? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yep. He, he was stationed in Korea? Was that no, he was not. He was um, actually um, an interrogator and an instructor at Fort Bragg. Um, mostly during the summer. Um, we, never, we were supposed to go, when I was really, really, really little. I was supposed, we were supposed to move to Iran. That was before the Shah issues happened. So that's how far back that was. Um, so because my father spoke Farsi, Spanish, understood Romanian, spoke Czechoslovakian, so we did all sorts of fun stuff. So... Do you, uh, do you have that same gift for languages? Somewhat. Okay. Um, I pick them up. I don't, so I only speak Spanish. I can understand some Portuguese, but and I can read a little bit of Italian, but, not a lot, but I don't speak others. Um, so now that the rice is ready, um, before I burn it, I'm gonna add the water to the rice. There we go. Then I'm going to, now that that's come in, in the rice, I add the chicken bouillon. In this case, it's a powder versus a solid block. It's just easier to dissolve, takes less time, less work. Um, a little sprinkle of onion powder, a little sprinkle of garlic powder, Two critical things in my kitchen. Um, something my wife and I both use a lot of, so it's kind of funny having the half Mexican, me, my son being half Mexican and my wife being half Italian. It's like, oh, hey, great. So that's always kind of fun. And I'm going to wait for the rice to come to a boil. Then I'm going to drop that to low. Does it make a difference if you use stock instead of bouillon? Um, it does. Um, you can use stock. Um, it works well. It's just, again, the, the amount of moisture that you have to boil out. My biggest issue with making rice this way is the type of pot. I've tried several different pots, and I generally, if it doesn't work well, if the rice is too wet, I have to cut down how much water I put in. Um, so it's, you know, experimentation on the kind of pot that I have. Um, so a little bit, uh, you know, um, it's a bit tricky. It's not, the stock itself doesn't change it too much. Um, it's really, again, how much moisture you have. Okay. So we're going to get to a boil in a moment. Take that away. And, oh, there it is. Here's my lid. Cover that. Uh, what pot do you recommend? So this is, strangely, I don't, I can, I'll have to put it in a measurement because I don't, the pot that I'm using is belong to my mom. Um, so it's the one that she used for rice. So I can't say I have a recommendation. It's not, it's not a, not, it's a, it's a stainless steel on the inside. It's, um, but it's not, it's not a non-stick coated. It's not Kathlon. It's not anything like that. So I 
don't have a better recommendation, just basically a medium saucepan that closes. Um, so that's basically what I have. Uh, now, I got the rice going, I got the black beans going, and so I had a little bit of an accident. I, the recipe that I put for the bistec and cebollado uh, was designed to be used with beef bouillon. Unfortunately, the beef bouillon that I bought from the store, someone had opened it and I didn't notice it. So I'm going to have to make it work. By making, um, by deglazing the pan with red cooking oil. And finally, using the marinade. Uh, some recipes for bistec and cebollado basically um, talk about discarding the marinade. In this case, I'll use some of it. Uh, right now, I'm putting olive oil in my cast iron pan. Finish that off. Grab the next one. Olive oil. So I'll use some of the marinade, but not all of it. And so rather than using, um, you can use a, a complete steak and cut it down. In the interest of time, I got steak for stir frying, which to me works best as well. What do you uh, what do you use to what do you uh, put down to sear your um, steak? Um, olive oil, butter combination. Olive oil. I don't use butter for this. Um, I just use olive oil or avocado oil. Um, I, at this point, I'm just going to sear it and get it cooked mostly through. Take the Let that get seared. I had um, one of the weird things about this kitchen is this new house. You know, we've been here for nine, been here for nine months, and I still haven't figured out the equipment yet. So, um, every time you change something, you got to figure it out. But, uh, that's working out. And wait for that to sear so I can take it off the stove. And in the meantime, oh, I'm going to put some more wine in my glass. <laughs> I'm running low. Chef's little helper. Um, it's one of those, you know, Bryson, you're probably the, you're one of the few skinny cooks I actually trust. A skinny cook that you trust. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Uh, I uh, although I, I put on some weight there a few months ago. I've been been working to get it back off. Um, I understand. Um, I put on weight too, and uh, this is why there are no bikini pics of me on Twitter. Oh, uh, well, there's a there's a particularly saucy one in my uh, yoga slash fight shorts that I just posted uh, an hour ago. I have not seen that one. So. Yeah. So I used to I used to competitively fight. So I still have. That's what oh. I actually teach yoga in too. But they're my compression shorts to against oh. injury. So I've, I have a handful of those available. I decided to share one for Mr. Ian Meyer. Uh huh. Understood. Um, yeah, I, as I mentioned, um, we just got back from vacation. We were up in Maine, and I'll tell you, I was. Um, you know, going out on the beach in 60 degree water was fun, but I'll tell you, uh, rash guard top and bikini bottom was about the best I could do. Um, decent waves, we had a full moon, so tide was fun. But uh, where where did you went to Maine? Yep, drove all the way up to Maine. Came back through Boston. Yes, Boston is a magical place. I was just uh, in Boston a week and a half ago. Really? Oh yeah. yeah, that's yeah. 
Okay. That's actually where I got my hair. I got my haircut to go to Boston because I was in court. Oh. Hope everything works. Uh, yeah. No, I was the I was the lead expert witness. Ah. Okay. I happen to love Boston. Uh, my dad's family is from the Boston suburbs since like 1630. So 1630. I, you're saying for almost 400 years. Yep. Wow, that is really neat. Yep. Um, I, yeah, my dad's family. Um, well, yeah. Long story. One of my, one of my ancestors. My, one of my ancestors was a butcher in downtown Boston. He had his own stall. Um, a long time ago, and uh, when. You know, my dad was a kid, so. Um, but yes, uh, family in Boston, all the way back, you know, the Boston suburbs, Boston itself. So yes, I love the place. So. Well, back on the infosec bikini thing, I was talking to to Mike Ellis earlier, and we're thinking about mm -hmm. doing a special episode. We're going to call only aprons. Okay, that'll be worth it. That will be worth it. And only aprons to count. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Okay. All right, so I'm uh, where I'm at is my rice is about where I want it to be. My yeah. beef, working on boiling down my my liquid that I, I worked here. Um, I've also um, I did uh, I did onions and peppers to add because I just wanted a little more color. Okay, good. good I, I didn't know we I didn't know we had beans, so I, my, I was, apologies. my apologies. My apologies. It's just rice and steak. I feel like something's missing, so I'm just going to add it in. Um, yeah, um, I. Yep. Hey, my first time doing this, so kind of space to that. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, actually make sure uh, to submit it because when we do the cooking book at the end of the year, I don't want to I don't want to leave it out. I want to make sure it gets in there correctly. Understood. Understood. Yep. I, I want I want I want your recipe to be captured perfectly forever. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. So, Boston hates non-Bostonians. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I it just, Shoot. Well, that person never gets like going. Parisians hate everybody that's not from Paris. Well, okay, fine. So anyone, anyone who says that from Boston, who's not Bostonians, well, sorry. Um, I don't know how, I don't, I don't get it, but okay. That's your hill to die on. Um, oh, it's, I guess they're joking. Pity. It's sentient. Well, you know, the city itself, yes. Well, okay, so I'm currently sauteing the onions. Added more olive oil. I used a little bit of the marinade from the meat. I'm going to add, I'm going to let that cook first. Well, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I realize I was kind of light on the recipe part. So I also do homemade tortillas. So um, that's something I like to do a lot, but it's not necessary. Um, so let's see now. Onions are slowly sauteing. That was actually two uh, entire uh, the yellow onions I used instead of white onions, but um, I'm today. Um, that was two entire onions based on the amount of meat to balance it out. Breaking out one of the good steak knives for this. Uh -huh. That's something I tried not to do today. I have to sharpen all of mine. 
Um, I just haven't had time, so I could have done it today, but it's just, it's a Zen thing for me to sharpen knives and <laughs> to think about people and sharpen knives. Oh, no, 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 it's actually very relaxing, whether it's uh, tool maintenance, computer work. You know, some things are very zen. So for me, um, yeah, all of my good knives are need sharpening. So oh, and the other thing about doing this is. I have to be, I'm, I'm on a gluten-restricted diet, not a gluten-free diet, but a gluten-restricted diet. So I have to not eat a lot of, obviously, meat product. I'm going to add some red cooking wine in now, the onions, to make up for the fact that I don't have beef bouillon to put in, or beef stock. You have, you now have a fan club of people who like the soothing, uh, sharpening knives thing. <laughs> Good. Okay. Awesome. Great. Um, so hair, makeup, and sharpening knives. You're a hit, Christina. Okay, cool. Uh, Personally, I, I like to sharpen sides. <laughs> cute. Cute pun. Very cute pun. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Still sharpening. Good job. I sharpen forks too, by the way. I collect them. So I'll somehow I, I'll get some posts up. I have I have a cup I have a battle ready battle ready katana and a wakisashi and a battle ready bastard sword. Um, that needs some sharpening. So it's, it's fun. What is a battle ready katana sword? Does that mean you're like ready for the walking dead? Pretty much. It's actually designed for combat. And the maker has guaranteed it that if I break it, they'll replace it for free. Well, I mean, I think in battle, you only get one shot with that. Yeah, well, they actually want video of you breaking it. So they actually demonstrate by chopping uh, uh, bowling balls. That's how the vent the manufacturer. They're not historically accurate, but. Um, you mean they're reliable? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. They're a, bit, a little bit thinner cross section, but they're they're still in the same format, and they're a good way to steal. But yes, they actually use bowling balls as an object to attack. So. so the onions are coming down. Could be better. But it's coming along well. Looks like I need a little bit more red wine. In the pot, that's not necessarily going to be, but I will take another bit of my side here. Ooh, hot. And it's hot in here. Oh, yeah. No, I have all these things going on my stove now, and I'm like, ah, it's getting warm. Yep. Real so swords are good. the gift they keep on giving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think I'm actually all caught up and ready to go. Okay. So, mm. I'm going to put the steak back in. These are good. Cool. Awesome. I'll make sure to send it to you. I'll make sure to send that to you so you have it. Mmm. Where are you at? What's going on? Right now, I am putting the steak back in the pan. Um. Trying to diversify my cast iron pans. I only have one right now. So using my cast iron pan, the one I take camping. I I love cast iron. I also love camping. I can't wait to, to head out again, although it is ridiculously hot right now. So I, well, I, mean, I don't yeah. like people being super hot with it. That, that I don't like so much. 90 some degrees is no fun. 
So show where I'm at already. I added some. I, I roasted whole garlic in there. Cool. Golden. Good. Mm. Okay. So I'm gonna check the rice in a minute. Let me move a few things out of the way. Oops. And I will. So my mother's from Mexico City, and my grandmother was a Castilian teacher, so that's where the Spanish came in on my side for me learning it and where some of the food appreciation came from. Oh, I'm trying really hard to eat this. I could have just had to eat some steak. Mm. Well, she, was a, she was a Spanish cotillion teacher? My grandmother was. My mother was actually a CPA and the vice president of a uh, chief financial officer of South Africa. That was her last position before she retired. So, unfortunately, my mother was allergic to tomatoes, so we never had tomatoes in the house, which was really difficult. So, yeah. camera. Oh, tomatoes? Hmm? Excuse me? Tomatoes? That's yeah, made life very hard growing up in a house with Mexican cooking and no tomatoes. Yeah. So, so this is how my play came up. There we go. There's the camera. Ooh, all right. Um, here, I'll hold mine up. We gotta, we gotta do our um, our screenshot to to end it out. Okay. So we we do the plating together. So we both get in it, and we got it. You have to be all in it. Yeah, there we go. Pretty hair and all. Okay. Awesome. Right. Oh, I yeah. I have cilantro. It's still in the fridge, but yes. I read the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to bring it out. So awesome. You're great. All right. So um, before we go, highlight the charity again and how folks can um, contribute. So again, it's the Brain Tumor Society, uh, braintumor.org. And you can go to their website and look, you know, sign up for donating there directly. Um, and that's about it. And any last tips on our meal tonight? Hmm. Prepare for surprises. <laughs> Prepare for surprises. Prepare for the unexpected. Prepare to have to create beans at the last minute and do yes, it. Sorry about that. Awesome no, 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 it works out. It worked out. That's, I mean, it, it could have been something like, oh, by the way, this has beef. And I was like, oh, um, I don't have anything defrosted. That, that I couldn't recover from. Beans, well, I, not a problem. I could have said, hey, now you get to make tortillas by hand. That would have not happened. Yep. <laughs> but I do have a package of tortillas, so I would have been ready for that one. You can do that. You can do that. Awesome. Great. Maybe that's, maybe that's a new variable to throw into this. Each chef leaves out one ingredient, and I have to, like, play catch up. <laughs> um, this sounds kind of like Iron Chef, but... Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm just... A significant other with <laughs> yeah, no, don't. <laughs> Food resilience. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Awesome. All right. All of you at home, remember, hashtag Unicorn Chef. We want to see what you make, and we will catch you next week. And like I said, special episodes. We have actually have several special episodes uh, pending. So not only are we going to be doing these every Wednesday, there's some special guests and some ridiculous themes that we're going to continue to do. Um, for those of you who didn't catch the cicada one I did a month ago, stuff like that. So see you all around. Later. Take care.